in my 500 level in my pediatrics end of putting exam four out of five of the theory questions were in my notes so in today's video we're going to be talking about how to pass your clinical exams i mean your clinical years are like from 400 but your core clinical is actually 500 level 600 level welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is daniela Antoine and i'm a final year medical student this video is going to be divided into two parts there will be the things you can start doing from day one to help you pass your exams when it arrives and then there are tips for the exam itself so this first section of the video we're going to talk about things you can start doing from day one my first tip for you is to attend lectures i swear by attending lectures i don't have a hundred percent attendance but i'm just telling you what works and attending your lectures works because nine times out of ten lecturers are actually telling you what they are going to ask in the exam so if you attend your lectures and not just attending your lectures but actually paying attention in class they will emphasize on certain things note those things down and read them during the exam and i always like to tell this story because in my 500 level in my pediatrics end of putting exam four out of five of the theory questions were in my notes and i didn't read them so that was a bummer but you can see that attending lectures is important my second point is that you should not run away from clerking your patients and actually examining patients this is for the people that have phobia for clerking do it even if you're scared you either do it now or you do it on the exam day and if you start doing it now when you do it on the exam day it won't be as bad but if you decide to not do it now on the exam day, you're going to see crazy. Don't run away from it as much as possible. Even if you don't like it, just do it. And the more you do it, the better you become. Carry your logbook on your head. You see this logbook thing? Carry it on your head. Generally, for things like this, you know, you're just like to do wasabi and like, you guys, please, why are you guys doing the most? Do the most though do the most i don't know how it is in all the schools but in my school your logbook is like 10 percent of your ce so you can really imagine your two ce's are unpredictable like you literally don't know the questions you're going to ask even if you know the questions like some exam days can just be bad but if your logbook is good that's already like 10 percent that you're sure of out of 30 percent it's like a cheat code really just make sure you do the most when it comes to your logbook sign your logbook be smart sign your logbook anything you see sign even the ones you don't see sign with caution okay that's my advice attend your clinics attend your ward rounds and attend your calls this is actually how you learn the clinical skill you're required to know for calls i struggle a lot with going for call but it's actually really really beneficial because these are times when you actually get to see some kind of rare cases and then also times when like house officers can actually teach you some things like the crowd in the hospital is less a lot of people are not there so you're likely to actually gain more when you actually go for calls attend your postings guys at least have 80 to 90 percent attendance because you actually really learn a lot okay it is one thing to attend and it's one thing to actually be involved so my, this is my next tip is to apply yourself when you attend don't just go there and be standing at the back or just you're not interested in what's going on like actually try to be involved actually try to actively learn because the way it is with clinicals in medical school is that you kind of determine how much you learn based on how inquisitive you are because while some doctors some nurses they voluntarily share information some others are just laid back like what's their own you know you get everybody has problem it's not left for you if you push you actually get so don't be that nonchalant person be very chalant you should try to study most days i would say study every day but i don't really think i mean all things are possible if you're that kind of person you can study every day well try and study as consistently as you can try to study every weekday like whatever you do in class whatever you do in postings for that when you come back just try and review it even if it's for 30 minutes even if it's for one hour that way you're actually consolidating the knowledge you're building up on the knowledge and a lot of times in your exam it is actually your residual knowledge that comes to save your life not actually the things you have been reading for that exam do you understand so this is why it's so important to start studying from day one as much as you can even if it's not day one for example now if you're watching this and it's like let's say week seven of your posting and you have not been reading start reading now because even what you start reading now to the end of posting can actually make a huge difference in the outcome of your exams and how much you're learning okay my next tip <laughs> okay my next tip which kind of sums up everything i said from the beginning is to be consistent guys unfortunately or should i say fortunate consistency is the key to everything there's nothing you can do to change it it is natural law it is natural design even god rewards consistency so if you choose to apply any of these tips and you don't apply it consistently you're actually not going to see results if you choose to attend this class then you don't attend the remaining five one out of five like come on but when you're consistent you know everything consolidates everything is 
everything is stacking up on each other and consistency doesn't mean perfection also some days you can only study for 10 minutes some days you can only study for 30 minutes some days you can study for two hours some days all you have is 15 minutes just try to make sure you're doing something every day you know it adds up to be cordial with your lecturers be respectful let your body language be that yes sir i'm humble i'm here to learn from you do you understand don't ever be in the bad light of your lecturers because if you're not doing OSCE, if you're doing long case long case is largely subjective and there are so many variables there are too many variables in fact a lot of things can influence the outcome of your exam literally so it helps when you're on the good side of your lecturers do you understand because they are likely to have more compassion for you sometimes they can give you pointers they can give you clues do you get and that's also why attending your classes attending your lectures attending your posting attending your word rounds is important so that they can actually know you even if they don't know your name let them know your face so that they know okay this person has been coming this person has been putting effort that kind of thing please if, if i'm making sense so far you know subscribe and support my channel and help me to help you do you understand because this next portion of the video is going to talk about things you should actually do for the exams proper okay practice 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 unlike your written exams from basic medical and preclinical clinical exams actually involves a lot of hands-on it involves a lot of things that you are doing so it's not just about having the knowledge there's a difference between having the knowledge and you actually being able to apply the knowledge and your clinical exams are testing how you apply the knowledge you understand so it's not enough to just read it for example clicking now you can read the clickings from the guide. You can read like, okay, these are the questions I'm meant to ask. But it's different when you have been actually clicking these patients. You're less likely to forget those questions because you have actually done it. Do you understand? So even if you have not been clicking the whole posting, now is the exam time. Let's say you have one week or two weeks to the exam. Start clicking the patients. You can even click your friends, your group mates, you know, your study group. Group studies and discussion, guys. Ah, this one I can lie down on top of this table. I've always known that group studies and discussions are important but i don't think there's any year where i have actually applied th that concept of group study and discussion like 500 level i was burnt out i was exhausted from the whole school year so on my own i didn't really have that but group discussion makes it so that it's not like monotonous that you're actually just reading the slide you're discussing you're talking here and there you guys crack jokes all those things helps with your mood do you understand it's not as like discouraging as you just reading on your own and another thing too with group discussions people can explain to you and you're less likely to forget do you understand when is your friends actually explaining things to you they are taking their time and another thing too is that with group discussions information is circulating information is radiating because postings as we know they are very variable like this group might be in this place today and they saw this and when another group comes to the same place they may not get to see everything that the former group saw do you understand so some people know more in certain aspects than others so when you all come together for these group studies you're redistributing the knowledge so that i'm taking from you you're taking from me i'm taking from do you understand so there's chemistry <laughs> no common things first all you oversabi people yes hold your ear did you hear me i'm saying it again for you know the common things first know the things in your environment there are some diseases that for example in pediatrics there are some diseases that is an abomination for you not to know those things for instance malaria tb like things that you know you commonly commonly see around you malnutrition why would you not be learning one rare congenital disease that you have never seen you have never used your eye to see it inside a clinic or in ward round <laughs> that's what you're not going to read for the exam does it make sense do you understand so you have to know the common things first even in class there are diseases that lecturers are always talking about things that you know you have seen it in clinic you have seen it in ward round you have seen it on call they've also told you about it in lecture and then you now not read those things for exam or you will not revise those things for exam it's unforgivable for example in ong oski you cannot not know how to do obstetric exam because they will always ask it you cannot not know how to examine a mass a uterine mass in this case most likely a fibroid you cannot not know about fibroids also very common revise past questions me i'm a past question warrior because nine times out of ten they're always going to repeat past questions and even if past questions are not repeated the advantage of doing past questions is two things the first one is that you are actually testing your brain your brain is kind of like a muscle the more you exercise it the more it grows the more it gets stronger so the more you actually practice bringing out this information from your brain the stronger the connections i mean the second one is that you're familiarizing yourself with the pattern of questions that are most likely going to be asked in your exam i don't know if this thing has happened to you where you are reading or you have been reading but once you see past questions like your mind goes blank it's like what is this 
It's like, do you understand? So it is one thing to actually read, but the fact that you have been reading does not guarantee that you can actually answer the questions, which is why it is essential to test yourself beforehand. Carry your past questions on your head. You should be friends with your seniors. Like, there are so many classes. For example, 400 level. There's no way that I would have made it through 400 level without Kilima. There's no way I would have made it through 500 level without Victoria D. They've gone ahead of you. They have more experience. They know the ways to put you forward. In OSCE, look into the eyes of your examiner. This one, I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> Make sure you stay, not stay. I mean, don't do it in a creepy way, but what I'm saying is like, for example, in a station, you don't know what to do or you're confused about something. Don't go and be looking down at your paper. You will not look up. Try and look up. I will look to the hills from where my help comes from. You have to look up and find help. Because if you don't look up, how will you see if your examiner is trying to help you? Do you understand? Sometimes they want to give you hints or clues. Work smart and hard. In as much as you're working hard, also work smart. I've given some tips about knowing the common things first, you know. Say what you know or say what you are sure of. For example, if you're presenting a case, anything you're not sure of, nine times out of ten, don't say it. Because... You might actually be setting trouble for yourself because if you say something now, lecture is like, okay, so what does that mean? Do you understand? You are diverting yourself from where you would have gone to straightforward. You would have ended your presentation. Do you understand? Your team would have gone normally, but now you have gone to do Vasabi and you have taken your examiner in a different route. Be confident. We all need a little confidence. One of my seniors and my friends, Ado, is always telling me, just be confident, just be confident. I'm like, please, Ado, it's because it's you, it's because you, you're smart. Do you get that kind of thing? But, a little confidence always goes a long way because your clinical, in as much as they're grading how much you know, they're grading how well you're able to actually present your information. So stand tall. Even if you're uncertain, you don't know much about the case, the things that you actually do know, say it with confidence, not overconfidence. So don't go and talk as if, you know, but just a good amount of confidence. Be time conscious, especially with your long case. Of course, we all know this one by now. If you don't know the answer, move on to the ones that you actually know the answer. Don't waste time on anything. With your long case, I actually advise that you actually go with a watch and you time yourself. Because my very first pediatrics long case, you know, I spent all my time clicking my patient and I did not examine. Yeah, and I just remember another thing. When I talk about working smart, a tip that I got from my seniors is that for your exams, for example, um, pediatrics long case now i'm using pediatrics a lot because i don't know after you've clicked your patients and you're examining you accept you are einstein but you will really have time to actually examine every single system and they expect you to examine and report every single system right so the hack is that you should start first by examining the systems that the pathology is in for example if you're Suspecting gastroenteritis in the child based on the presentation, you always have to examine abdominal, abi. But you may not have time to actually do the examination for every single system. So you can just write that is normal, but know how to do the examination, know the possible findings and what they could possibly mean. Because sometimes lecturer might now be like, okay, examine this system. You actually have to examine to show that you actually reported what you did. Do you understand? Not like you're just manufacturing information. Even if you're manufacturing information, do you understand? It's just about working smart. Pray, guys. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key always. Like I said, with clinical exams, unlike written exams, even in written exams, there are so many variables, but those variables are very increased in clinical exams because there are a lot of things that could go wrong starting from you to your examiner you it may just be a bad day for you on a normal day you know those things so on a normal day those are things you can do but that day for some reason you're just not performing as you usually would or it could just be like you happen to pick a case you're just not familiar with and it throws you off balance or your examiner herself might be in a bad mood maybe she fought with her husband that morning and she's coming to come and transfer aggression on you so many things can go wrong do you understand so that's why it's important to pray for yourself with the blood of jesus i also have another video that i've already done on this channel advice for medical students in general you might also want to watch that because there are some things i said there that i didn't mention in this video so yeah that will be all for today bye and see you in the next video <laughs>